Well, thank you for talking with us here in Buffalo. Let me start with some bigger picture questions. How would you quantify the danger that distracted driving now poses to all of us? So we know that distracted driving is probably one of the top three concerns on the roadway in addition to alcohol and speed. But the problem with distracted driving is it's vastly underreported because we d often don't know when it's involved in a crash. A survey from AT&T showed that 95% of us disapprove of distracted driving, pretty overwhelming, yet 7 in 10 still admit to doing it. How do you square that? So I'd say that's one of the biggest challenges that we face is that no one else likes a distracted driver, but many of us are still willing to be distracted while we're driving. A lot of it has to do with the, um, with the addictive nature of these devices. And so we are constantly tethered to them from the moment that we wake up in the morning until the time we go to bed at night, we're using them. And somehow we're expecting our time behind the wheel to be different. We've got to figure out a way to shut these devices off or to put them away when we're behind the wheel. That same survey showed six in 10 drivers regularly text. Almost 40% admit to regularly using social media while driving. Shouldn't those stats scare all of us? It should absolutely scare us. We know when people are distracted uh, by electronic devices, looking down, whether it's at social media to deliver a text or even to read a text, you can travel the length of a football field in just a couple of seconds when you're on the road at 55, 60 miles an hour, extremely dangerous. And so we know that distracted driving results in thousands of fatalities each year. And in fact, over the last two years, we've seen highway fatalities increase by 14%. This is the biggest jump in over 50 years. So we've talked about the problem. New York is now proposing this textilizer, giving law enforcement uh, this new tool to try to fight back. Why do you think this is a good idea? You know, technology got us into this situation. Technology can also get us out of this situation. Having a tool for law enforcement to detect whether or not people are using their devices after a crash is really priceless. Because right now, if someone survives, they're not likely to admit it. It takes weeks or months to subpoena cell phone records. But if they're a fatality or if they're injured, they're not even at the crash scene um, and able to answer questions for law enforcement. And so we know this is a big problem. In my experience with the NTSB, we found that distraction was one of the top contributing factors to transportation events. You know what the other side says. How do you respond to the criticism that this is an invasion of privacy? You know, we heard a lot of the same arguments um, years ago when we were trying to address impaired driving. Certainly today we have the breathalyzer to identify whether or not someone's impaired at the roadside. You then have to have a confirmatory test if you're going to pursue criminal charges. But the fact of the matter is over 40,000 people die every year on our roadways. And the fact is, as a society, that we're not stepping up to stop the carnage um, by giving law enforcement a tool uh, to help identify when this is happening is really beyond me. We have got to address this. It doesn't matter if you kill someone because you're impaired by an electronic device or you're impaired by alcohol. You have resulted in the loss of life of someone who was cared for and loved. We've got to stop the complacency when it comes to this deadly behavior. In response to some of that criticism, do you think it's important that we have proper safeguards in place to prevent abuse and protect all of our privacy in regards to a device like this? When we embark on new technologies, uh, new laws and new regulations, there's always a needle that has to be threaded. You've got to protect uh, personal privacy, but you also have to balance that with the loss of life and the public safety concerns. No one likes a driver who's texting. What we've got to do is get to a point where we have a strong enough deterrent to keep people from doing it. This is just one tool in the toolbox, but it could be a game changer. Finally, if New York passes this bill, legalizes the textilizer, do you think other states are going to follow suit? I think New York has the potential to be an absolute leader in this space. If this legislation were to pass in New York, I could see many other states following suit, very similar to what happened with the breathalyzer decades ago. Ms. Hersman, thank you very much uh, for your time. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Great to talk to you. Have a safe day.